Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Alaska Pipeline Service Company, sustaining Alaska's pipeline and its operations today and into the future. Find a living in fisheries. The UAS Fisheries Technology Program offers online study from anywhere in Alaska, plus labs and workshops in many Alaska towns. most likely a chum. Find your living without leaving where you are. Fisheries Technology from UAS. The National Weather Service. Hello, welcome to the Thursday edition of Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Kimberly Hefner and today is March 2nd, 2017. You can always reach our weather information line when we're not here on air at 1-800-472-0391. And you can also visit our website by going to weather.gov forward slash Alaska. Now let's get on to the topics of the day that are important across the forecast area. We're gonna start off along the Alaska Range. This area highlighted in yellow is for a wind advisory. Winds across the Alaska Range are gonna be gusting between 40 to 55 miles per hour with gusts up to 65 miles per hour. And this is also going to produce very cold wind chills as we head through the night. So that's going to continue through your Friday afternoon. Let's take a look now at the Southeast. We do have quite a few, uh, warnings across the central and northern panhandles and as always you can go to the webpage by going to weather.gov uh, and then a forward slash AJK for the Juno area and check out the winter weather advisories and warnings for tonight uh, as we get some snow that's developing ahead of a low pressure system they're going to be seeing additional snow amounts between 8 to 16 inches with the highest amounts near Pelican and looking further to the north there is snow continuing across the eastern Brooks Range up towards that eastern boat for seacoast and we also have some gustier wind conditions along the northwest. Uh, the area in red is highlighted for blizzard conditions that will continue through the day on Friday and we're expecting visibilities to be reduced so travel in these areas are going to be very difficult and plus the wind chills across the southeastern Brooks Range there is also going to be down between 50 to 60 degrees below zero with those gusty conditions along with um, reduced visibilities in these areas with the advisories down to one half mile at times. Now let's take a look at the systems that are bringing the weather across the state today. We have an upper level low pressure system that's spinning out in the eastern areas of the Gulf waters here, a counterclockwise spin around the low there approaching the uh, central panhandle. And just to the north there's another low pressure system just to the north of the uh, coast here, it's br bringing some colder air mass and tightening the pressure gradient right along the coast. Now, uh, the system responsible for keeping the low pressure systems from moving into the southwestern areas of the state and the western areas of the Gulf where you can see these breaks in, in the clouds ahead of a low pressure system out here in uh, the western Aleutians is an upper level ridge and this ridge is centered right here in the central bearing as you can see the air mass is moving in a clockwise fashion around there so just blocking any low pressure systems from making any progress to the southwest coast putting this into motion one more time you can look at the flow that i was talking about and that low pressure system just kind of stalled out there along the central Aleutians bring up a plume of moisture. Now at the surface, the ridging is centered just north of the Pribilof Islands as a 
uh, 1,041 millibar low. Um, just to the south of it, the low pressure system is starting to, the next one is starting to creep up from the North Pacific. But the one that's been um, most impactful, actually the two, are the low pressure systems out in the eastern areas of the Gulf and the low pressure system that is just off that northeastern boat for seacoast. Now, the low pressure to the north, you can see the tighter gradient bringing a strong westerly flow. And across this area of the state, we're seeing wind gusts uh, persist between 35 to 50 miles per hour with higher gusts up to 75 miles per hour. So extremely strong gusty westerly flow across that north coast. And then across the southern areas of the state, we also have a warning I forgot to mention for Valdez and Thompson Pass. That warning is going to be out through tomorrow tomorrow afternoon as we have some very gusty flow along the backside of this low pressure system, very tight gradient here across the south central areas of the state and the Aleutian Range. So expect a very strong northerly flow all along the channel terrain that is across the coastal areas. The winds um, across the southeast Panhandle are also gusting quite a bit out of the north between 40 to 50 miles per hour with higher gusts up to 60 mi 65 miles per hour. And this new snow development is basically along a stationary front that's extending out from the surface feature. And the upper level low is bringing additional moisture up and over riding the cold air mass that's now in place across the southeast. So as we head into the ni nighttime hours, we're not going to see any change in the location of this low pressure system. So snow showers are going to continue to develop and move inland. And then across the so southern areas of the state, we're going to see clear conditions, but that uh, comes with a colder regime across the state. And the temperatures during the nighttime hours, as we'll get to in just a moment, are going to be much below the normal temperatures for this time of the year, as well as the northeastern uh, northeastern areas of the state, they're going to stay in that snow pattern with reduced visibility. So travel is going to be difficult across the southeast and the northeastern areas of the state. However, the western areas of the state are in a quieter weather regime as this high pressure is going to continue to nudge towards the Seward Peninsula here, spreading an axis across the central areas of the state for tonight. As we head into your uh, morning tomorrow, this low pressure system is finally going to be moving up to the central Aleutians, pushing a warmer front uh, as it heads to the north. And this is going to be spreading some rain into the central Aleutians all the way out towards Shimia, some light snow showers uh, pretty much ahead of this low pressure system with a stronger east to southeast flow as that low comes up. Across the eastern areas of the Alaska Peninsula, we have this ridging, so a lighter flow uh, along the eastern areas of the Bering down to the Alaska Peninsula, and then a change of the flow quickly across the Aleutian Range and Kodiak Island. This tight gradient is going to cause some real, very strong winds between 50 to 60 miles per hour uh, just off the surface. So for aviation, uh, the community, we're going to have to keep an eye on these low pressure systems until that pressure gradient settles. It's going to be very difficult to travel across from the Alaska Range on over towards the western areas of the Gulf. Also, this low pressure system on Friday is going to sit near the Dixon entrance and slowly move to the southeast at the same time, uh, creating a little bit stronger axis as the upper level low system just kind of spins in place. It's going to reinforce the troughing across the northern areas of the waters here. Uh, meanwhile, we'll still see those gusty winds through the afternoon for Valdez and Thompson Pass across the central areas of the state. It's going to be clear but extremely cold as the low pressure system from the north continues to feed a colder air mass down towards the northern uh, the northern areas of the Gulf. Looking at the northwestern areas of the state, fairly quiet conditions. However, the winds are going to be slightly gusty out of the west direction tomorrow with some light snow showers as a weak energy rounds the base of the upper low that's just up there in the Arctic Ocean. As we head into the day on Saturday, we'll finally see the conditions around the low pressure system to the north begin to diminish along the eastern coast. However, we're going to have to keep an eye on this low pressure system as it sags to the south. It's going to be bring some snow activity towards Fairbanks and 
all the central areas of the state. So we'll keep an eye on that because the ridge is going to start breaking down as the upper level wave sends another strong wave southward. So reinforcing cold air mass for your Saturday, creeping towards the northern Gulf once again. Now here's that low pressure system. As I mentioned, the low pressure currently brings snow across the southeast is going to be moving off to the southeast at the same time. A new low pressure system, however weak on Saturday, is going to be developing. Still it's going to be an axis near the southeast, but most of the snow shower activity is going to stay offshore as we get this weak ridge axis extending out towards Canada. We'll get that offshore flow component from high to low pressures uh, in the Gulf there. Looking at the western areas of the state, another dry day with that ridge slowly creeping towards south central area, and then winds will be light. With the western areas of the Aleutians getting a break from the rain as the weak front, warm front that moves through the bearing is moving up towards the Pribilof Islands. We might see some light snow shower activity. However, there's going to be another low pressure system yet again following the one that's moving through tonight. Now, let's take a look at your temperatures today. We did actually warm up fairly good across the coastal areas of the Gulf into the mid-20s with the more slightly warmer temperatures down at, at net, seeing 41 degrees today. Most of the Panhandle areas saw be between 25 to 30 degrees with mid-30s in the far southeast. Across the interior locations, mainly in the single digits and the coldest areas of the state along the northern tier between 10 to 15 degrees below zero until you get towards uh, the Seward Peninsula and south in the single digits and lower teens. Across the southwestern areas of the state, Bristol Bay was climbing up into the mid-20s with uh, the Pribilof Islands in the upper 20s this afternoon. Now across the Alaska Peninsula and through the chain, temperatures ranged from the mid-20s to the mid-30s. Now temperatures tonight are going to be quite cold across the interior areas of the state with those gusty conditions across the northern tier of the state. Wind chills are going to be between 30 to 60 below zero and a range across uh, the south central areas of the state also in the 10, 10 degrees above zero to 10 degrees below zero with wind chills especially in those areas that are continuing to see wind, especially along the coast. And across the southwest, also in the single digits to 10 below zero, and gusty winds as well. The southeast is going to be in the mid to upper teens. And then towards Ketchikan, you'll see temperatures climbing slightly into the upper 20s. For the Aleutian chain also, they're going to be modifying into the 30s as that warm front begins to creep. Now for tomorrow, not much temperature range out there across the bearing. However, they are going to be getting closer to 40 degrees. Across the Alaska Peninsula, that's where you see that transition uh, to the colder temps um, towards the southwest in between 15 to 25 degrees is a good range for there. Pribilofs is going to hover near 30 through your day on Friday. And then across the areas of South Central, an another day similar to today with some gusty conditions there across the Copper River Delta. Uh, really blowing into the marine waters. Now the, the southeast can also expect a very similar day to what they had today in the mid-20s to mid-30s down towards the Ketchikan area in our net. Across the northern tier of the state, very cold temperatures all the way through Fairbanks from the single digits to about 10 below, possibly co you know colder, especially for the eastern areas of the Brooks Range. It's not going to be until late day when they peak with their temperatures. Now the flying weather for tomorrow, the conditions are VFR for much of the state, except for that northeastern sector and across the Gulf along those two low pressure systems. And mainly MVFR conditions for much of the Alaska Peninsula and then for the western areas of the Bering. We will see some improvement across the Alaska Peninsula. However, the low pressure system will bring some IFR conditions across the western areas of the chain. MVFR conditions will hover just across the southeast as that low pressure system lingers, and conditions will stay in MVFR to IFR across the north coast. Taking a look at your passes in more depth, we should see MVFR go to VFR for Anatovic and both Adigan Pass. And then Lake Clark and Merrill will be VFR, VFR for Rainy, and VFR for Windy, VFR for Isabel, and VFR for Mentasta. 
BFR for Tanita and Portage as well. Chilkoot and White Pass should be VFR much of the day, but look for a possible MVFR to start in the morning. The freezing levels for your morning are going to be draped just about the central areas of the bearing and then towards the low pressure system that's bringing that slightly warmer temperatures along the central panhandle. Now, looking at your uh, freezing levels aloft, two to 6,000 feet across the area where we have that next warm system coming from. Now the icing tomorrow should be primarily concerned across the western areas, the Bering and Aleutians above 4,000 feet, and then icing above 4,000 as well across much of the southeast, and below 4,000 across the north and northwest coast. Looking at your jet stream for tomorrow, here's an amplified ridging that is developing across the eastern areas of the Bering. This is your blocking system, and then low pressure system brings some deep cold air into the Gulf Gulf waters. Behind the ridging is another low pressure out there near Kamchatka. And then the strongest air area of winds is pretty much right over the Alaska Peninsula. At the 9,000 foot level, ridging is centered in the northern areas of the Bering with the change of direction from south to north. And then this northerly flow is going to be strongest across the Alaska Peninsula and western areas of the Gulf, with also a strong north 40 to 50 knot flow across the northeastern areas of the state. Look for a very strong offshore flow component, but hard to show that on the 9,000 foot and the 3,000 foot map, we can show a little bit more of an offshore pattern there for the panhandle. And then we also will see that strong wind at 3,000 feet all the way from the Kenai back towards the Alaska Peninsula, all out of the north. And on the western periphery of this ridge, some strong flow coming up with that front from the North Pacific. Your turbulent areas, here's the summary across the western areas of the Bering and especially across the western areas of the Gulf into the eastern Bering with that low pressure system. Uh, mainly just off to the east, causing some problems uh, for turbulence, and then just to the north. Now, in just a moment, we're going to be back with your marine forecast. Daylight shifting time and a groovy occultation. Welcome to Stargazers. I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Pla Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. And I'm Dean Regis, astronomer from the Cincinnati Observatory. Well, my friends, we're getting close to that annual abomination I like to call daylight shifting time. Uh, don't you mean daylight saving time? Same thing, and I don't like it. Oh, come on, James, it's not that bad. Speak for yourself. Moving my clock forward makes me have to wake up an hour earlier. Uh, but I, I thought you liked waking up early, I mean, to look at the stars. Yeah, but even us early birds have our limits, you know. Yeah, yeah, well, so what James is griping about is something a lot of people find annoying about this time of year, and it can actually impact stargazing. Fortunately, we don't have to move our clocks forward until March 12th, and we have a really groovy occultation of Aldebaran by the moon later this week. What are we talking about? Let's show you. Daylight saving time is that time of year between the second Sunday of March and the first Sunday of November when everyone moves their clocks forward one hour. Not everyone does it, but a lot of people do. The purpose of us collectively changing the time on our clocks one hour forward is so that the evening daylight lasts longer. This in turn sacrifices the sunrise time. During the course of the year, the amount of daylight and darkness we experience gradually changes due to the curvature and tilt of the Earth. Even if we didn't change the time on our clocks, we would still notice that the daylight hours in the summer would be longer and the nighttime hours shorter. The opposite is true during the winter months. Here's where the issue lies. For those folks like Dean who live at more northern latitudes, the amount of daylight and darkness they experience during the year can vary dramatically. But for people like James, who live closer to the equator, daylight saving time isn't as useful. Let's show you. The Earth tilts at roughly 23 and a half degrees with respect to our path around the sun. During the equinoxes in March and September, neither the northern hemisphere nor the southern hemisphere is pointing more toward the sun. This gives us 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of darkness, hence the term equinox, which means equal night. 
However, when we're close to the solstices in summer and winter, the hemispheres of the Earth are pointing more towards or away from the sun. Because our planet is round, people who live at extremely northern or southern latitudes see a whole lot of daylight in the summer and very little sunlight in the winter. The problem is, in the summer months, the sun rises several hours before most people wake up in the morning. So to compensate, we all collectively move our clocks forward one hour, and thus, as a society, we agree to wake up an hour earlier. That way, we can have more daylight in the evening hours before we go to sleep. For us astronomers, daylight saving time delays when we can begin our evening observations, which is probably another thing that adds to James's frustration. Yeah. Speaking of which, let's see what the Moon and Aldebaran are doing this week. Okay, we've got our skies set up for Saturday, March 4th at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're looking high in the sky facing southwest. Timing is important for this one because the almost first quarter moon is among the stars of Taurus the Bull. On the night of March 4th, the moon is going to get tantalizingly close to Aldebaran, the star that marks the eye of Taurus. Let's advance time one hour at a time, and you'll notice that as each hour passes, the moon gets closer and closer to Aldebaran until suddenly... Where did Aldebaran go? Yep, the moon is going to occult Aldebaran. For those of us living in the eastern time zone, the moon will be in the western sky during the occultation. Yep, that means everyone in North America will be able to see it, presuming the clouds stay away. So there you have it, one last really cool celestial event before we have to move our clocks forward an hour. And it's all there for you to see when you keep looking, looking up. Welcome back to the show and let's talk about the ice edge for a moment. We're looking at the ice edge just uh, to the about 50 to 60 nautical miles just to the northeast of the Pribilof Islands and it's really going to be growing from Bristol Bay. It, it, the wind, the northerly flow that's so cold is going to help that ice edge continue to grow to the south. So look for growth in that ice edge. Now looking at your southeast, we're looking at mainly gales across the northern tier of the Marines for your Friday forecast with north to east winds. Higher gusts are going to be as up to 65 knots across these areas. Looking at the inner channels, seas will be between 6 to 9 feet and the outer waters will be 10 to 13 feet. We're going to see some uh, directional change for your Saturday forecast, more of a northerly flow across the area. So we're going to start with those higher gusts across most of the northern areas and then across the inner channels look for slightly uh, lower seas on this day between five to nine feet with the highest seas up there towards the northern Lynn Canal. The outer waters will be small craft uh, for the most part with a little bit lighter wind speeds just to the south and then seas on that day will be eight to nine feet. Looking at your south central waters forecast, we'll primarily see a north to northwesterly flow across the area tomorrow. Gales, uh, except for the storms just off the tip of the Kenai Peninsula there. And then seas on this day will range between six to 20 feet to, uh, south of Kodiak Island. So the seas are gonna be quite active on your Friday forecast. On Saturday, however, the winds are gonna be starting to taper off between 15 to 30 knots across the area on that day. And then seas will be a little bit lower between three to nine feet. Taking a look at your Alaska Peninsula for Friday, a northerly flow for the area with very strong max gales to the south of the Alaska Peninsula. And seas on that day will be seven to 14 feet, the highest seas along the North Pacific there. And then we'll see your Saturday forecast, much lighter wind speeds for the area overall with 10 to 30 knot range, the strongest there across the uh, southern tier of the Alaska Peninsula. Seas on this day will be 
ranging between two to seven feet with the highest on the south side of the peninsula. Looking at your Aleutian forecast, we'll see a east to southeasterly flow with that low pressure system lifting to the north and primarily gales across the central Aleutians and also uh, small craft towards the west. Seas on this day will range between five to 20 feet with the highest seas there across the central Aleutians. On your Saturday, expect winds to change direction slightly out of the southeast uh, for much of the central Aleutians and the south flow there for the eastern areas becoming more easterly towards the western Aleutians. Seas on this days are going to be between 6 to 18 feet, the highest seas again towards the central Aleutians. And then across the western waters, uh, we'll see, or the eastern bearing, we'll see uh, winds on this day between 15 to 25 knots, a northerly flow close to um, close to Nunavak Island there, becoming more southeasterly towards St. Matthew Island. Seas on this day will be around three feet with slightly stronger winds picking up for the St. Matthew Island and Pribilofs on Saturday between 25 to 35 knots, so gales to the north, and seas will be higher between 8 to 13 feet. Watch out for freezing spray on both of those days there. Towards the northwest and western coast around Kotzebue, the winds will be southwesterly, becoming more westerly as you head towards the eastern boat for sea coast with storm force gusts out in that direction. Looking at your Saturday forecast, winds are going to become a little bit more northwesterly across the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. And then we'll see winds also changing direction towards Kotzebue out of the west to northwest. Summing up your weather for tonight, look for snow uh, causing travel conditions to be hazardous across the southeast overnight as they get uh, 8 to 18 inches of snow across the area and then also reduce visibilities along the east coast. A warm front moving up towards the bearing is going to make progress on your Friday forecast with ridging building in across the central areas of the state bring some very cold air to the south. Watch for this low pressure system sagging, in, sagging to the south on Saturday while the other low pressure for the southeast begins to diminish. Thank you, that's all for tonight. Stay safe out there and don't forget you can watch uh, look for our watches and warnings and advisories by going to weather.gov forward slash Alaska. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Coming up next on 360 North. Behind this amazing landscape lies 